Shalom, giving all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bahashim Rechakwadash, the bonds of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and greetings and salutations to Yahweh, upholding testimony of our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai in truth and in sincerity. <clears throat> and what has been a uh, a founding pillar of both our destruction and faith from two opposing sides, good versus evil. Um, how do you how do you say light versus darkness? Is I mean I'm talking about day one, and uh, it is it has been the name of the heavenly Father and the ordinances. And the um the directions or the way of life after after that name or not what do you mean or not because see there's one God and he doesn't have many names. And it is he who is to be worshipped, and he alone in a singular tense uh, that is to be praised. But since the time of the beginning, and um, most vehemently, we could speak of the the terms of um, in terms of Exodus. And us uh, after we left Egypt, because <clears throat> you, you, of course, Yahweh was always there, but you had other false gods and false idols present as well. But the thing is, it's a sin. It's a um, it's a transgression to submit yourself and to um, worship and exercise yourself out after the ordinances of other gods, of idols. And so that's the light and darkness of, of, of the matter. You know, that's the, uh, that's the black and white. And of course, the the worship of Yah of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai would a would be a representation of that light, a representation of that white. <clears throat> Before we um get to Isaiah the forty fifth chapter, I actually do want to grab some. Something from Exodus. Matter of fact, let's do um, let's do Deuteronomy. Now this is the Hebrew. Hebrew, would you would consider the Hebrew Creole? This is Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, in the fourth verse. It says, "Hear, O Israel." The Lord our God is one Lord, which is in the Hebrew, as we will say, Shema Yashar Allah, Yahweh Allah Yahweh Achad, which of course is the translation is indeed what we just spoke of. But uh, see, He's one Lord. There's not many, not many gods. <clears throat> Pardon me. There's not many gods, and then when we left Egypt, we were 
see, we, we were in the midst of many gods, and I and even to this day, our people still cannot shake the idols of Egypt. And see, the prophet said, Woe unto you that go down into Egypt for help. And trust in chariots because there are many. That's what Isaiah told him. And now, of course, when you go into the historical background behind that, you had Jews who actually had an affinity to Egypt. And um, because of the great wars that were taking place uh, with Babylon and, and the wars of the <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, because of the great wars that were taking place, uh, you had Hebrews that sought refuge in, in Egypt. And but see, Jeremiah told no no well, it was um I believe it was Isaiah told him. He told them, he said, don't go down into Egypt. Because, see, Yahweh told them not to go down to Egypt. But they didn't listen. And they were disobedient to the prophet. And um, they died. Because they trusted in Pharaoh. But Pharaoh went to fight in the battle of Migdu um, in the Levant region against against, Nep I believe it was Nebuchadnezzar. It was against the Babylonians, and Pharaoh lost. And he lost, and he lost bad. And so those of, those of the Hebrews who had, had the affinity and alliance and the trust in Egypt, they lost as well in a terrible way. And, and to this day, our people still... They still try to, to cleave onto Egypt's majesty for um, power and strength. But, <gasps> pardon me, <clears throat> but strength coming from the heavens, strength coming from Yahweh by Shemiah was shot. It doesn't come from, from, and see, the modern Egypt would be America. You know? The strength cometh, strength cometh from the heavens. It doesn't come from man. Now let's go back to the, um, let's see here. Matter of fact, let's go to the, let's, let's go to Exodus real quick. I don't want to make this long, but I did want to, to run through the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter. But I wanted to hit some key points. Um, let's start it. Let's, let's talk about the Ten Commandments and let's talk about like the first and second of those commandments, the um, top two, D or A. Let's, um, let's do that. This is Exodus, the 20th chapter. And, um, oh, yeah, well, let's shit, start at verse two. It says, I am Yahweh thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage, out of slavery. Because the Egyptians set us in slavery. Now, this, this is the first commandment. Verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. No other powers, no other deities are to come before. Yeah, how about me, I'll show you. All right. Verse four, it says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. All right. So you making idols, making idols, worshiping idols, worshiping stones, worshiping statues. It says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath, or that is in water under the earth. It says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself 
to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Or six, in showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. All right, so that's so we can have a basic rudimentary understanding of uh, what is required of us. That's why we, we went there. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter. And so, um, you know, you hear these, these, uh, these Israelites, well, they're not, well, they are Israelites, but they don't claim to be Israelites. They say we're black. They say we're African. That's what these guys say. And, um, and they see they're wandering stars. And if you follow them, you're going to wander behind them into everlasting darkness. This is Isaiah, the 45th chapter. It says, Thus saith Yahweh to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before me. I will loose the loins of kings to open before the two leaf gates, and the gate shall not be shut. And the Lord was dealing with this heathen king of this king of um, the Persian, the Medes. Uh, verse 2, it says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. Now the Lord is talking to, about the nation. He's talking to the nation of Israel. And part of those crooked ways is worshiping idols, worshiping deities, burning incense to these different Babylonian, because really the Babylonian gods. We talk about um, Eshun and, and all this madness and Estarte and all this demonic stuff that our people like worshiping and these, these Egyptian gods. That's... It's unprofitable. It's um, it's foolishness. It's primitive and it's it's just wrong. It's silly and is 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 wrong. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And how is that? Because it says you should know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It says, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, which is speaking of the truth. It says, that thou shall, that thou mayest know that I, Yahweh, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. So the God of the Bible is our God. It says, for Jacob's, for Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect. The first and foremost, we're dealing with the elect, by the way. You other guys who can't get it, well, you're gonna you're gonna lose bad when the missiles come. It says, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. And see, our people don't know the Heavenly Father. You know, even we didn't know him uh, to, uh, to a point in time where we were awakened, those of us who are of the initiated. Verse five, verse five, it says, I am Yahweh, and there is none. Else, there is no God beside me. He says, no God beside him, because he's, he's only one God. He says, I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun. And see, what he, they, they like to worship um, um, Ra, they'll say. Uh, they, um, or, you know, which... The term shamash in the Hebrew means sun. They like to worship the sun, a lot of these people who say we're Egyptian. But it says that 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 they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, which the west is where the sun sets. So from all of the earth, it says that there is none beside me. I, Yahweh, I am Yahweh, and there is none else. 
It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, I will do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens, from above. Let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, I have created it. Woe unto them that strive with his maker. Let the pot strive with the pot shirts of the earth. Should the clay say it? <laughs> it's like, basically what the Lord is saying. He's saying, how about you strive with a, a mortal like yourself? How dare you try to strive with me? I'm, I'm, I'm God. I'm, I'm supreme power. It says, should the clay say to him that fashion of it, what makest thou? Or the work he hath no hands. That's what these. That's what Israelites say. Umar Johnson and all these demons. That's what these immature children say. They 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 rise up against he who fashioned them. It's just so in the from a from a, a mathematical perspective. It's just it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. Verse 10 says, Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou? And that's what they say to the heavenly father. Like, well, what, do you, what did you create? You know, I worship the sun. I worship other idols and deities and stones and rocks. And I wear beads around my neck like a demon. You know? Because these, these guys, this, um, these, these African idols, man. You understand? It says, Or to the woman... What has thou brought forth? And that's what they say to the Heavenly Father. They mock and they, they, they look down upon those of us who truly who worship the true God. They look down upon the God of, of the Bible. Um, uh, and, but um, not for long. Verse 11, it says, Thus saith Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel and his Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hands. Command ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I even, it says, I, even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness, which is speaking of Yahweh Shah, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and he shall let go my captives which we are the captives, all right? It says, not for price nor reward, saith Yahweh of hosts. Thus saith Yahweh, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and the Sabians, men of stature, which these are, when it's speaking of these, when you talk about the labor of Egypt, uh, merchandise of Ethiopia and the Sabians, it's speaking of the merchant man. It's speaking of the the man of, the, of they have wealth of the of the planet Earth, who have influence, um, because it, it's almost as if you know in America, they, America's called Babylon. That do, do they descend from the ancient Assyrians, like the ancient Babylonians? No, they don't. But it was um, it was a name to liken them to their characteristics. That's why it says. Uh, the children of Judah should sell the children of Grecia to the Sabians, a people far off. Um, no, we're not going to actually sell them sell the, them to the ancient Sabians, the ancient Ethiopians. But the Sabians were actually known to be a merchant people, a people in the proximity of where the Sabians were, a Sheba. It was a, a place of merchandise. And so it, it was more so from that perspective. It says, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee in chains. And these see all these heathens that you want to worship and follow after, they're going into slavery um, uh, under the Israelites. It says, in chains. But see, you're such a slave, you can't get that through your head. And you want to be somebody you're not. It says, in chains, they shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. And they shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is no and there is none else. There is no God. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. See, he hid himself. He um he was a illuminated one, but in 
It was in darkness, though. And, and who and who's the light in the darkness? His man, his elect, his prophets. That's why I said the light came into the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not, Dr. Umar. Young man, you are, you are of darkness, and you comprehended the light not when it came unto you. All you niggas who want to worship these Egyptian gods and you scoff at the Bible talking about the Bible is the white man book. You're, so, you're such a primitive individual, ain't you? You just don't get it. You still, it's been, um, it's been like, like 4,000 years since we left Egypt and you're still losing. You're still following idols. You still don't get it. You know, we, we had to go transatlantic slave trade. All this had to happen and you still don't get the picture. It's just a wandering star. It's verse 16. It says, they shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them that shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. So you worshiping these other heathenistic gods. Verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. And, that, and the elect are going to be saved from this. The um the from the coming destruction, all right, and all of you other guys who didn't want to get the picture, where well, you're gonna be destroyed, and you have to come back through the elect. Verse eighteen, it says, "For thus saith Yahweh that created the heavens, God Himself that formed the earth and made it, He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahweh." And there is none else. So he's making the emphasis that there is no other God. Verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I am Yahweh, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together ye that are escaped of the nations. Which that's speaking of the remnant, the elect. It says, they have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Verse 21, and all you guys who you want to worship these damn deities, you want to put, you want to burn these incense to these idols and you want to sacrifice chickens and sacrifice fruit by the water. He, he, they're not going to save you in that day. Verse 21, it says, tell ye, it says, and bring them near. Yeah, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who did that, Yahweh? It says, who has told it from that time? Have not I, Yahweh? And there is no God beside me. It says, and there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself the word is going out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Oh well, you don't want to serve the God of the Bible. You want to talk. You want to talk madness about the Bible. Well, you yeah okay. Well, go ahead and do that. Just know every you gonna bow. Your your knees gonna bow. Just, 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 just know that you, if you can, if you can't do it willingly, if you can't willingly bring forth that offering, well, um, you're going, you're going to be the offering, and you're going to be the sacrifice on the altar. Verse twenty four says, surely. Shall one say, in Yahweh have I righteousness and strength, even to him shall man come. All that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. You will. You're going to be ashamed. When you're going to be ashamed when, see the, when the economy crash and, and um, you see, you, yeah, you got, okay, you got a hundred round, but you, but the hundred round, you ain't buy that now or, or the, or or, you, or it's a hundred people coming after you, and they, and they got hundred rounds too, and um, you don't have any food to feed your children because the grocery store is empty, and uh, and you don't have that standard from your howard to get the job done. 
because and you trusted in 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 your own foolish thoughts and you trusted in your own your own silly imagination to think that there wasn't a God, to think that Yahweh wasn't the only God, and to think that you could do what you want and think that you could worship your idols and, and oh, the Bible is the white man, but we're well seeing that day. You know, the, the white man wished the Bible was his book. That's why he cleaves onto it. Onto it. And what are we going to see in that day? Verse 25, in Yahweh shall all the seed of Israel be justified and show glory. So them give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Machakodash, the Bun Sadeos and Apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to you, Akim. Shalom and keep the faith.